Right now, though, we're transitioning into sports. We started talking about this when, when we got a phone call. Uh, but the Greg Schiano situation at Tennessee is a mess in more ways than one. As we said, uh, agreement in place, uh, not necessarily a contract, Paul. I can't remember what the term was, but there had been a... a, a memorandum of yeah, understanding. memorandum of understanding. That's exactly mm-hmm. what it was. Mm-hmm. Basically, everybody had agreed, you're going to be the head coach. That's right. Now we'll work out the, the legal language, but basically there's an agreement in place. Well, then the rug got pulled out from under Schiano. Um, the fans went crazy and all this stuff was brought up about the fact that he was an assistant at Penn State when Jerry Sandusky was the defensive coordinator and all the child uh, sex allegations mm-hmm. uh, were made. And, of course, Sandusky was was found guilty and is in prison. Right. So it wasn't just allegations. It was proven that to be true that he was a child molester. Uh, but nothing was ever legally or otherwise tied to Greg Schiano that he knew anything about it and yet that came up, and now not only do you have a situation where there was a memorandum of understanding, you've got a potential defamation situation here because his reputation has been damaged, Paul, and this is going to affect him going forward trying to get coaching jobs. Absolutely. I'll make two observations about this. The first one is the memorandum of understanding. And in our society, a lot of people do not understand that, that you can actually create a contract by spoken word. In other words, if Gary, if I say you come over and, and paint my house and I'm going to pay you $1,000 and you go over and begin. Now, we may not have anything in writing, but if you partially perform, the law says if Gary Harris begins to paint that house and expend time and effort, and then I try to say, hey, we don't have a contract, then I'm out of luck. Gary gets paid because you have partially performed. Mm-hmm. And although I don't know all the background on this Shiano incident, I know just a little bit if he partially performed at all, in other words, he had these uh, discussions with Tennessee, with their higher-ups, with their AD, I'm sure, and and some of their influential administrators, and they had an understanding. And they said, all right, you'll be our coach. Here's your pay. Here's your buyout. Here's your level of bonuses if you reach SEC championship, et cetera. And then they said, you know what? We, We will put this in a formal contract, but in the interim, let's do a memorandum of understanding that this will be the terms of the agreement. That memorandum of understanding is going to be a contract. Right. They signed it, uh, and regardless if they'd have signed it, you know, if Shiano begins acting on it and, and making arrangements to come right. to Tennessee, he's going to argue we partially performed. So you have a, a breach of contract element there that he's got a darn good case, uh, from what I know, that he had this understanding, they put it in writing, they signed it, he signed it, and then they backed out based on, some allegations that are not proven. So basically, let's say, and I don't know, but let's say it was a five-year, you know, $35 million deal or whatever. Right. And there was a memorandum of understanding. Now his lawyers and the Tennessee lawyers are going to sit down and try to, to knock out a settlement, right? I mean, he's going he's, he's, he's to get some money. Absolutely. And the case is how much are they willing to pony up, uh, both legally and out of fear possibly of a defamation, suit because I'm sure if they pay him a large chunk of money, they're going to try to get Tennessee will try to get something written in there that he can't sue them for defamation of character. Yeah. What, what, what will occur? And and this goes to my second observation is if Greg Schiano is sitting with me, I've said, not only do you have a breach of contract case, you have a defamation case because obviously they've taken the internet trolls and they've, they've they've adopted those views. Right. Yeah, Yeah. They've harmed your reputation. Now I would sit down with the Tennessee officials and then I think what you're going to see, Gary, is you're going to see politics enter. Because if I was advising Shiano, I would say they're going to have to pay you um, based on the PR and, and other things that they've done. But on the flip side now, uh, your case is going to be in, t- in the state of Tennessee. I'm assuming that's where the contract originated or the memorandum of understanding. I'm sure they flew him in and they right. negotiated there. So then you get into a Tennessee judge hearing the case. If a Tennessee jury awards you the breach contract, defamation damages, whatever your damages are, then it's going up on appeal, more than likely. So you, you do have some politics that get into it, although we, we hope our judiciary stays clear of politics. They don't always. Right. Uh, we know that. But they're going to have to pay him. Uh, I think the smart thing to do if you're Tennessee is to sit down with him, uh, enter into a settlement agreement where they're going to pay him some money, and they'll it'll be confidential. There'll be a non-disparagement clause where – he can't go out and say bad things about Tennessee. They can't say anything else about him. And uh, and there'll be a release of all claims. 
this happens more frequently than we think when you when you look back at it, you know, for different reasons. You remember uh, George O'Leary had the Notre Dame job and then yeah. he had embellished his resume. That's right. And and he had to he never got to coach. And we've seen other cases where coaches have accepted a job, signed a memorandum of understanding, and then backed out on the school. Right. When that happens, does the coach owe the university money or does his old school pay? How does that work if you've got an agreement and the coach backs out? couple of ways. Uh, the best thing that I could have is the memorandum of understanding in front of me. Right. So let's say the memorandum of understanding says that either party has 30 days to opt out of this. Then no one would owe anyone. You could walk away. But let's say that's not in there, that there's no clause in there saying, hey, you've got 30 days to think about this. This is our understanding. And within that 30-day time frame, either party can walk away from this deal. If that's not in there, then the coaches could be on the hook. Um, a lot of times you won't see schools pursue coaches like that because of the ability to collect. Right. You know, now I know we do have some wealthy coaches, but you know, a lot of them may not be able to pay the damages. And a lot of times the school doesn't want the PR. Right. They so want it to go away. Let it slide. Yeah. But, uh, but boy, I'd love to see the, the memorandum of understanding because, you know, that could come back to, to harm Shiano if, if it's got some clauses in there that could protect the school. Um, but I'm afraid too much has come out about why they elected to back out. Um, that's going to give him good footing in a court of law. Wrapping up with our legal expert, Paul Patterson, in studio. We've discussed several topics. Still have time for you to get in on a phone call if you want to on the Bud Light Hotline at 205-342-9904. All right, last thing I've got while we're doing sports and, and, and universities and coaches because it's become such huge business. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I know they said for years Coach Bryant just had a handshake agreement You know, with the University of Alabama – it's a different time, a different place. Now it, 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 you, you have to look out legally for yourself. The university has to look out for its interest. All these coaches, uh, so much money is set aside for assistant coaches' salary. So it's big business. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes the agent isn't a lawyer. Sometimes, more times than not, the agent is, but not always. Right. Sometimes the agent runs an agency. How does that work when you've got an agent that, and even if he is a lawyer, uh, you've got an agent that represents you. In other words, he or she is negotiating for you, but there might be a team of lawyers that come in to handle uh, the legal aspect. It's usually not just one person uh, representing the coach. is isn't a, a, a whole team, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Jimmy Sexton yeah, exactly. uh, has got a big group. Yeah, uh, I've dealt with some of his uh, lawyers for his company before on, uh, on different matters. And but, I'm not sure he's a lawyer himself. You know, I'm not sure if he is or not. Um, but he has a lot I'm working for him. He's got, he definitely has some because I've, I've talked with him personally. Um, you know, in that situation, a, a good agent is going to have, if, if, if it's a non-lawyer, they're going to have a lawyer ready to go That's right. to, to address the contract. Because there are a lot of issues when it boils down to contract law that a non-lawyer might not know. For instance, do you know what a merger clause is? A merger clause is a very important clause in a contract because what it says is regardless of what agreements or, or anything that has been spoken outside of our negotiation, the only agreement that we have is now merged in to this contract. So if it's not in this contract, it's not part of our agreement because, and that's why it's called a merger clause. They merge every term we've ever talked about only into this one document, and if and if the term that you're alleging was breached is not in this document, then it's not a breach of the contract. So, you know, I see a lot of lawyers miss that when they're they're drawing up contracts. One final thing, like Tennessee's paying Butch Jones. Mm -hmm. Oh, heck, man, you've had Auburn still paying, I, I think, Chiswick. Might even still be paying Tuberville. You have these schools that, that get rid of these coaches and they have to pay, you know, buyouts and so forth. And now Tennessee looks like it's going to have to pay Shiano. Um in your expertise, you know, dealing with some of these agents, you know, that money's got to be paid. What does it come out of the university coffers or do boat boosters usually step up and pay it? Where does the money to pay all these coaches that are not actually coaching at your school come from? Do you know, you know, I, I can't say that I know a hundred percent, but a lot of times they, they do their best to keep it with boosters, right? Where it's not tax not coming dollars. out of the university, fund. but, but it can come out of the university fund and i think there's some arguments that if it does come out of the university fund 
then any taxpayers should be privy. I see. That's where I was going with it. Yeah, that's to know what it is. Absolutely. If you're if you're paying football coaches from from your general fund, like that, that's a disservice to them. It, that's right. That's right. And it's to me, it's really gotten out of control. Uh, you've got some some really good agents because, as yeah. you know, Gary, some of the buyouts are just oh, enormous. it's incredible. I mean, and, I'm just uh, saying, you know, I know there's a lot of pressure on these guys, but if you sign one big Division One Power Five conference head coaching contract, right. you never have to work again. Mm-mm. You don't. You, yeah. you should have enough money to set you up for life. So, right. yeah, they, they're they under some pressure, but they get paid for it. 